everyone and welcome back to another Muskox Monday. Today is a very, very special one because love is in the air and harems have started. So what exactly does that mean? So harems, just like in the wild, are, and this can be for lots of animals, one male, like Heathy Poo here, and lots of ladies. Here on the farm, we're selectively breeding, so it's a little bit different. In the wild, your dominant male um, if that would be Heath, would be the one who's going to fight with all the men. He's going to get to his pick of the ladies in that herd and get to breed with all of them. Same concept here, minus the fact that we pick what male to breed off of their genetic diversity, not after who can be the best male in a fight. Don't tell him, he still had fun fighting this past fall. So in here for harems, we pick two males. Um, for their genetic diversity first and their domestic traits. They're gonna go on opposite sides of the fence. So right now we're in front of Heath and his ladies. In a little bit, you'll also get to see Fen and Greek and his girls. And they're gonna get to hang out for about four weeks. And that gives them time to go through one estrus cycle for the ladies. And if anything is going to happen, gives them time to hopefully make that happen. As I said, with that selective breeding for us, we're really wanting to make sure that we're only bringing the number of animals onto this farm that we can handle. So we're only breeding each year anywhere from four to six females. In here with Heath, there are two lucky ladies. Their names are Lansing and Madison. They're both going to hopefully be first time mamas for us. This is Heath's actually first year breeding as well. And he's taking a break from chasing the ladies around. Um, to get some food. <laughs> and when we put them in here, genetic diversity is first and foremost, then their domestic traits. Because at the end of the day, those lucky mamas behind us are gonna be the ones who teach our muskox how to be muskox, how to act on the farm, and how to deal with everything around here. So what's about to happen with these guys is he's gonna chase them around a little bit. <laughs> And as they get more comfortable with him, he's going to be very the big gentleman that he is. And he's going to kind of get them used to what's about to happen. So he's going to lean on their back end and he's going to hang out right there. And then he's going to maybe mount for a second so they get used to it. And they're going to gradually work up to when the magic actually happens out here. <laughs> And then after they're done, they generally are back to grazing and moving around and you might see them separate a little bit more than you would have before. After four weeks, they're going to all go back to their prospective pastures. So Heath here will go back in with the big bulls with lots of confidence over his last four weeks. The ladies will all go in a mommy to be pen so that our herd manager can keep a good eye on them and make sure that they're nutritionally getting everything that they need or making sure that they don't eat too much either all winter long. Um, and then Hopefully, come next spring, we can report some magical new babies out of Lansing and Madison back here. All right, so now we're over with our other harems. We have two of them every year. And this is Fen and Greek back here, and he has two ladies, Pixie Stick and Cashmere, both first time, hopefully, mommies. Fen and Greek here is our only pro. He's done this before, so he's been a dad before. And that means he jumps a couple steps. So when we were looking at Heath, he's a first time ever being in harem. So he's gonna spend the next couple days kind of panicking. He doesn't know what's going on. All he knows is there's these other muskox in there and he's gonna chase them around for a while. Fen and Greek has exactly the idea of what's happening in here. So his girls are somewhere back there, herded into a corner so he knows where they're at. And he's already kind of licking his lips and getting very excited about what's about to happen for him, which is great. And he's going to spend a little bit more time when he sees people than he um, kind of maybe growling at us or maybe charging a little bit. So we're going to keep an eye on him because he knows exactly what could happen. We could take his ladies away from him at some point. So when we're trying to decide who we're going to breed out here, I said we're going to look at genetics and domestic traits. So... Fen and Greek here has a gland and it, it doesn't smell musky. So I know it's one of the biggest things about muskox that we automatically think is that they're gonna have some musky smell and they don't. So his gland, it's a preorbital gland. 
kind of excretes a little bit and he's gonna rub that on fences. He might kind of walk by and give us this like sideways eye as he does and then start rubbing like he was doing to prove that this is his, that those are his girls and we should keep our distance. Um, the smell that you associate with a musk ox, that musky smell, actually comes from our bulls in rut urinating on themselves and it fermenting. So that's what gives them that musky smell we associate with the musk ox, which means there's nothing on them that actually is kind of a gland that produces a musk like their name would imply, which is pretty cool. When we're thinking about breeding, the other thing we're looking at as their ages, we never want to breed these guys too young. So yes, a female musk ox could breed all the way through her life most likely and she can breed when she's pretty young. Out here though, we're going to wait until our females are at least five years old and so are our males. So um, that's something we choose to do for us out here is to wait until they're at least five years old to breed them. One of the things you're probably noticing while Fenugreek is uh, marking his territory here so that I don't try to take those girls from him is that he's not grazing. And one thing that muskox are really good at is eating except for our bulls right now. So our bulls in rut have one focus in that helping us have a future on this farm, which means that all during the rut season and especially when they're being bred, they do lose weight. And that's one of the things that contribute to our bulls having a shorter life expectancy than all of the girls out here on the farm is that they are going to have a little bit of a stressful time right now as they breed out here. Um, and so that will contribute to it. Well, from Fen and Greek here and all of the rest of our um, males and females who are helping produce the future of our farm, we thank you guys for tuning in for another Muskox Monday. Let us know of any questions and we'll do a sequel to this eight months from now when we hopefully have some really cute, adorable calves on the ground. Thank you guys. Bye. Uh -huh.